Hey guys, it's Dave again. Welcome back again to Dave's Dimension. Welcome back again for another video. And yes, we have another unboxing today. So it looks like uh, it, this came a little day, another day early. I was supposed to get this on Wednesday, the 30th, but it came in today, Tuesday, the 29th. This is the 27 inch Samsung that I've been waiting for. This is a 27 inch Samsung monitor. Best Buy has this on sale while supplies last for about $129.99. So it's a nice, uh, I mean, we'll, we're gonna see how, how nice this is. This is Samsung model number, let's pull it up, see if I can find a model number on this box. Uh, this is Samsung T350 series model L is in Larry, F is in Frank, 27. T is in Thomas, 350. Frank, Hotel, Nancy, X ray, Zebra, Alpha, 27 inch, IPS, LED, F, A, uh, F HD, FreeSync. Now I'm going to include all those spec information, all the spec information, including a link to Best Buy, uh, Best Buy's product listing for this, in the description below. As always, I'm going to provide as much information as possible. So we're going to do this unbox. I've been looking forward to this because Samsung's always been high quality. You guys saw the Samsung monitor that I'm actually replacing this for. Um, I've had that probably for five or seven years. I mean, it's been a very good monitor, um, but this is going to be a step up. We're going bigger and better. Now, in case you're wondering, right on the box, we have a few little, little housekeeping things here. Borderless design conception so basically it's not that big bezel that we're going to see or we're going to see almost no bezel whatsoever amd free sync that is if you have the corresponding software and hardware in your computer to support that we have a 75 hertz refresh rate there's a game mode on here for those gamers just like with the aoc there's different settings for theater movie sports as far as your your brightness and contrast settings so that's in there there is a eye saver mode for those that have sensitive eyes maybe you're more partial to using the blue light filters that's an option there and this also has a flicker free option on here again this is part of the t35f series that's f is in frank now this is a 27 inch monitor 68.6 centimeters for those who need these centimeters. Now this is just your basic box. We have our legal details right there. Nice screen. So what do you say we just cut this bad boy right open, guys? <clears throat> now if this is your first time checking out the channel, uh, please take a few moments to check the channel out. Check some of our past videos. This channel is not a one-stop shop. This is, we pretty much go all over the place, guys. We're that driver that doesn't stay in our lane. We are going all over the damn place. Um, a lot, of, and this is your first time. We do a lot of, uh, well, we do a bunch of different various unboxings when, when it comes to Funkos, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Trolls, just about a little bit of everything. I'm also a uh, Ghostbuster in my spare time. Um, part of a local group uh, here in New York State. So I do also Ghostbuster gear. Um, a bunch of the Spirit Proton Packs they've modded. And I actually just built my first uh, full-scale pack. So there's a lot of Ghostbuster-oriented things in here. Also Back to the Future. So when we first open this up, uh, nice to see Samsung's got some, uh, some diagrams right off the bat here. Give you some specs. Now, the power switch is on the back of the monitor. I'm not too crazy about that, but since I have the dual mounts, uh, the dual mounts that basically raises the speaker off the desk, I mean, it should be very easy for me to reach around if I need to turn it on, turn it off. Now, of course, we have more diagrams on the other side here, guys. Don't know if you can see it right here, here, and here about how to put the stand on. Now, we're not gonna use the stand because I have my mounts. So, let's see if we have enough room here. Now, right off the bat, you always, always got to have fun trying to keep these uh, lids open. Now, 
they're packing. It is packed. Now, I will say this. This felt a, quite a bit lighter than the ALC package. Uh, not a ton of uh, pack materials. Right off the top, the monitor is facing upwards, guys. So if you open it up like I did, got the top part, the monitor is just going to lift right off. Okay? Now, just to show you guys here, okay, this is the back right here. This monitor does come with a VESA setup, so we can put our little bracket on here for when we mount it. Now, of course, you get your power switch, and of course, underneath here, you have your basic settings. You have your power, HDMI, and VGA hookup if you need a VGA hookup. Okay, so we have all that right there. We're going to take this right on out. As you can see, this is pretty much bezel except for the bottom, guys. This is pretty uh, straightforward. Very nice. I'm just going to lay this on the carpet here. Nice and safe. Easy peasy, light and squeezy. So, what else do we have here? Well, we got the stand. Now, I'm not going to be using the stand, but we're still going to take a look at it, guys, okay? So, this is a pretty uh, pretty sturdy stand right here. We got the little screws in case you want to put this together. And they have a little hook here, guys, for cable management. That's it's not bad. It's not necessary. It's not the greatest. I'm sure this could, you know, with enough force, it, this could probably be drummled off if you wanted to. But it's a nice little thing that you can just run the cord right down the neck. You got a nice little little step for cable management. That's nice. I like that someone is thinking of, hey, they're going to be running cords. Let's give them a little something extra. And that's nice that they did that. So let's open up the little bag here. Okay, so we have a square little power brick. I'm used to more of the rectangular ones that come with the monitors. My old one had a, a rectangular brick. Uh, very much like you see with a with a laptop, but this has a nice little texture pattern, which actually uh, accompanies the back of the monitor. It has this kind of gridded texture, if you will. So, what do you guys think of that? That's kind of nice, and it's not too heavy. It's not too heavy. This is pretty light compared to uh, other bricks. Now, they give you a HDMI cable, so that's nice of them. And, of course, your power, your other end of the brick connection. There we are. We're going to set that down. And, of course, we have the other part of the stand. Now, one big difference uh, is this is plastic. I mean, you can see this is completely plastic. We have a nice little, 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 metal, little metal thread knob. Now, of course, this would just simply... Connect right into there. You just take this and kind of, once this fits in, kind of tighten it down till it is completely flush. Round and around she goes. Now I'm going to take the book out of here and we're going to toss the box out of the way. Okay. Now, I mean, as a stand, this is this is pretty pretty stable. You know, it's not really going anywhere, unless you're going to shake the desk around. So, I mean, for a stand, this is pretty good. Obviously, this would you have your your slits right here, your little pegs that would slide right in, lock into place. There is some movements. Obviously, there's a little curve here, so it is meant to do some movements. It doesn't move on its own. It could be because this maybe requires enough force that the weight of the monitor would allow it to shift and move. But we're not going to be using this. So that's a nice little stand. This is obviously going to be most likely tossed out the trash because I'm not going to be using the stand itself. And there we are so far. So what I'm going to do is I am going to throw my bracket, my vest mount. Now, if you haven't 
seen the previous video where I installed the desk, the dual monitor desk mount. You might want to check that out. I went through a little bit of a process there showing how I will attach everything. And I think I might actually do that right here. I might actually show you guys how I actually put the bracket right on. It's fairly simple. So simple, even I can do it. Uh, now these mounts have two types of VESA setups. Some monitors will have a smaller grouping. Some will have a larger grouping here. So that's why there's those different mounts. Now VESA means that this is a monitor that is mountable. Okay. So let me just grab a few of the screws here. And actually, I think we're probably going to wind up using these. Because that kit actually came with a whole bunch. Now these, these longer screws you see right, right here are used with this spacer for more of the curved monitor. We're not using a curved monitor. This is going to be flush, so we're going to just simply use these. So... Let's get ready. Okay, we're gonna set that to the side. I'm going to lay this cloth down on my desk. In case you're wondering why, because I wanna protect the monitor as much as I possibly can. Well, here's something we'll do. We will actually use the styrofoam. To protect it. So, if you get yourself a new monitor and the frame, the monitor itself is fitting perfectly into the styrofoam, why not use that if you're going to do a mount? Okay? And you could probably do the same thing for the, uh, if you were to use the stands, you guys could do the same thing here. Okay? So, this, this is all I'm doing. We're going to align it right over the screws. And just like that, one hole is lined up. We're just going to start it. We're not going to do it all the way through. We want to get each of these started, and then we'll tighten them up. Now, if you didn't see the previous video, we want this hole up here because we're going to use another little cap head, a little, little cap right here. I call it a cap head. And we're going to screw that on top because what's going to happen is the mount that's already up, this is going to slide right in, and then there's a little threaded uh, male end screw that, will, that comes out there, and we're just going to tighten this down. This is meant for height, but also it helps secure it in there. So we're just going to screw these in now, now that they're threaded and holding in. Now, I already did the AOC 27-inch monitor on that mount, and it's been up there for a full day now, and it's, I I can't even imagine life before that thing. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. So, we're on there nice and tight. She's not going anywhere. And again, here's another, another view. You can see the HDMI, VGA, and the power. Now, also on here, I actually have the website up here uh, from when I bought this. Let's go through some of the basic specs. Uh, let me, let's pull that back up. Sorry for the delay, guys. So, as far as specifications, you get your basics here. We have a 75 hertz refresh rate, maximum resolution at 1920 by 1080. 27 inch measurement, HDMI, there is one port. This is Samsung, of course. Color they call it is dark blue gray, but this looks black in person. Now, I am curious, there is a little mechanism here in case you want to secure your lock electronics. Now this, I'm not sure what this little piece is for. I'm going to do some research and have a look into that. Now, what other specs do we have? Uh, this is a display type is LED. Aspect ratio is 16.9. Uh, of course, we get our different measurements. Uh, product height withstand is 19.51 inches. 
Without stain is 14.3 inches. That's the height of it. Product width is 24.09 inches. Product depth with stand is 9.13. That means the entire area encompassed with the stand. Okay? Product weight is 7.93 pounds. So this is fairly lightweight, guys. Uh, is this Energy Star compliance? No, it is not Energy Star certified. It is not. Is it EPEAT qualified? No, it is not. There is a one-year warranty on parts and labor. And there is a UPC number of 88727645 And a lot of these reviews, I mean, basically, she's at a 4.5 star, a 4.5 average rating for this. So not many people have said no to this thing, okay? Now, of course, I have not fired up this bad boy yet, but we will be doing that in just a few short seconds. Okay, the actual model number on here is... Excuse me for a second, guys. <sighs> Got to break out the specs. Okay, we show the actual model number is f 270 Oh, I really cannot read that. F270350FHN is the actual model number. So, like I said, I'm going to throw those, throw that into the description below. We are going to set this up on a mount, and then we're going to fire this bad boy up. So, I will see you in the next part, guys. Okay, so here we are. That's the same. I got the AOC right here. Got the Samsung right on here. So just to show you guys. I already threw a webcam right up there. The mount just slides right on there, if you guys can see. Got the little top knob that is supposed to be for height adjustment. And then there's cable management that the mount came on, and I know it's just ran it through. I'm definitely, I'm probably going to redo some of this, but for right now, this is a pretty good setup as far as my cable management. Again, excuse the mess, guys. So, power switch is right here. There we go. This I have to redo and set as my uh, monitor too, but what's better than a big old graphic of the Ecto-1? Now also your power switch doubles as directional controls. So if I want to make this brighter, I can do that. Sharpness, contrast, your basics, and of course hitting, pushing down does everything else. Eye saver mode is off. Source, if I want to switch to different sources. Menu option, here's your main menu. On screen display, transparency, position, language, systems. You got all your dif different system settings here. Source. So there we are. It's pretty. It's your basic setup here, guys. On-screen display. System. We have eco-saving, dynamic brightness, PC AV mode. Let's go over to that. FreeSync is off. FreeSync technology just gives you the whole rundown. FreeSync technology is a solution that eliminates screen tearing without all the usual lag and latency. Free screen and can be operated when you use AMD's graphic card. I don't have an AMD graphic card. I have a NVIDIA, so that's not an option for me. But hey, that's perfectly fine. Select the AV to enlarge the picture or PC. I'm just going to keep it as is for right now. Source detection, I just leave it as auto so it automatically determines 
VGA or HDMI. I always use HDMI, so that's a non-starter right there, guys. So there we are. Also, you have a little support, so you can actually do a self-diagnosis. Perform this test when you experience a problem with your monitor's picture. So we could actually do that if we wanted to. Information, we'd like to view information, like model name. There we go. Your basic version right there, all gives you all the information. Right now it is at 67.5 kilohertz. If I play with the settings, it will shift over, of course. And I could always reset all my settings back to factory default. So you got your basic settings. Let's go back. There we go. So there we are. I mean, this is pretty good picture right here, guys. Now, just to show, now let's see just how well this is. I'm going to drag a tab over. Got to do it the other way. Let's go to YouTube. So here we are at YouTube. And we're going to go over to Dave's Dimension, my channel. There we go. My little splash page right up here. This My banner is just me when I met uh, Christopher Lloyd, Doc Brown, a couple years ago at Niagara Falls Comic Con. Uh, I was much heavier back then. And also, of course, we have my little... That's my flux pack in all of its glory. She needs a little touch-up. i got to do that sometime soon. So, we're just going to pull up a previous video. There we are. Let me just move my arrow over. No volume because I disconnected my speakers very quickly. I have to reconnect them. But there we are. Skip ahead. Plays video pretty well. Let's uh, do something different. Let's go to uh, DCUO. I'm going to pull that up on the screen now. I did a video. I haven't uploaded it yet of me when I uh, did a little little demo of DC Universe Online. It's a little game I like to play once in a while. Okay, let's pull up DCUO, and of course I do not have the rights to DC Universe Online. It is just a game that many multiplayers will will jump on. Here we go. And we're going to jump on that. Let's see. I, what I want to test is to see how great the graphics look. Pardon me, guys. I'm sorry guys, I gotta flip these screens, it's not letting me do it, but you can see what I mean, the graphics are looking, pr I mean, just on the wallpaper alone, I mean, this looks, you can kind of see the detail right here, I mean, this just looks really good. I want to do a proper test with gameplay, and once I have these set up, we'll come back and we'll do that very quickly, okay? Okay guys, so we're back, I got the settings, I got, this is my main monitor, so let's play around with this. So we're going to open up DC Universe Online. I'm going to throw that right on here. And hopefully, what uh, the great image I'm seeing on my screen is going to translate to the camera here so you guys can actually see. So I'm just waiting for it to load. Looks like a quick update. There we go. And you guys can also see a little sample of the sound coming off my Logitech uh, speakers I got this past week as well. And I did a little bit of everything as far as upgrades.
Let's just go full screen mode. Okay, I got a couple different characters here. And graphics are just looking great now. Let's go with the villain. Dismiss some of those messages. Okay, let's go to a portal and let's do some fighting. Now, compared to the previous screens I've had, this is coming, this is playing out very, I mean, just everything is just much smoother. I'm loving this so far. Now, I'm also going to pull up a different game in a few minutes. So we can see just how much more better this will be. And if you know me, you know what game it's going to be. are looking pretty good on here. Extremely smoother compared to my previous monitors. Now, if you're familiar with DCUO, you might just be saying, well, yeah, the past year or so, they just upgraded a lot of the graphics. That is true, but compared to the previous, I had an old LED TV that had a built-in DVD player here. So this is a quantum leap from what I had before. And plus the smaller Samsung that I had for my secondary speaker over here. Or secondary monitor. Sorry, I said speaker. Uh, so, let's go to one of my favorites of all time. Ghostbusters, the video game remastered. I'm a Ghostbuster, of course I have to play this, right? Let's just see how much of a difference. Now, obviously, I have lights in here. If I cut the lights, I'm going to have a much better look. But I want you guys to be able to see how great this is looking in even a lighted atmosphere. Because you might get this monitor for yourself, maybe for work. Ghost Core, Terminal Reality, got a nice little trap graphic right there. Let's just start from the beginning here. Are you troubled by strange noises in the night? You experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic. Have you or your family? Now this is a remastered version of the game that came out about ten years ago. So just pick up the phone and call the professional. Obviously game graphics have come a long way since then. They just touched it up and catch mo kept mo most of it as it is. Hey, man, you hear these swings? Yeah. But by the new Gojo exhibit, 
Yeah, why? Something had it go away. Wait. I hear something. I'm gonna take a look. Wanna hear something really creepy? I was reading about Shand or, you know, the guy who donated most of the gozer stuff. He was into the occult. You know, supernatural. Weird dude. <laughs> uh well why don't we talk about it some other time? Any other time. <laughs> You Great Harold Ramis. Be gone, but not forgotten. Ghostbusters, is your haunting an apparition? Now, in case you didn't know about this game, this is kind of the unofficial third sequel or a third third movie in the series. They got all the original actors to come back and voice voice themselves. Andy Potts is Janine. Harold Ramis is Egon. Bill Murray as Bankman. Ackroyd as Ray Stans, and you actually get to play as a new recruit. Also, I I, I can't I, I gotta slap myself for not mentioning Ernie Hudson as Winston Zeddemore. Yep, that's you, the rookie. I guess he's right. What's your name again, kid? No names, Ray. I don't want to get too attached to this kid. You know, just in case you remember whatever one is good. He's tuned and ready to go. You may feel a little tingle. Good. We've perfected an extensive and rigorous training regimen that will teach you all your equipment's basic functions. It takes some time to achieve master throw skill, but it's definitely worth the effort. <laughs> Was that us? I don't think so. Ray? Had to be some sort of psi energy pulse. Substantial, a significant collected and centralized necromatic convulsion, level seven or more. Agreed. We need EMF measurement checks now. I know the answer, but I'm gonna ask anyway, is a level seven uh, whatever bad or very bad? On a scale of one to 10, I would say, let me guess. It's a seven. Let's just say we're about to get real busy. And that is not the fun kind of getting busy, is it, Ray? Look out! Slimer's escaped again! No way. Come back. Now, here we are. You can interact with a few of the characters, or you can just get right to action, which is me jumping down the pole. Move. And I can't believe they got the original voice to come back for even Vigo the Carpathian. There it is. It seems oddly drawn to the containment grid. He's been fascinated with it ever since you added the viewer to the unit. Okay, easy now, cadet. I'll talk you through this. Use the proton stream to get his attention. <laughs> Yes, you are going to blast the containment unit. There's no way to avoid that. That's some highly sensitive equipment you're disintegrating there, kid. Oops, you left one out. That's my fault. I was fine-tuning the interspatial gasket this afternoon. I'll fix it. You two get those ghosts back. He went into the sub-basement and has escaped. Now, there's a few Easter eggs here. Come on, kid. We got a job. Taking the right precautions. Looks like a copy of Spirit Guide. More or less. These traps right here where you see my crosshairs. Are basically variations of the extreme Ghostbusters containment uh, little uh, canisters for the power of the real Ghostbuster or the uh, extreme Ghostbusters proton, and of course a uh, RGB style wand made to look like it could be in a movie. 
here we go, we're going down to the basement. A little bit more of a tutorial right here. You want to get to know your protons. It can be, for the most part, capturing a ghost is pretty straightforward. We break it into three basic steps. Sap them, cap them, and trap them. Spectral entities derive all their strength from an accumulation of PK energy. Blasting them with your proton stream or other offensive now, of course, you can reference your Tobin Spirit Guide and your little PKE. It's more like a PKE tablet than a meter. And this is where you do your upgrades. Depending on how much money you have, you're a recruit, so you got zero. So we're just going to exit back out of that. Dissipate that energy. Dissipating their PK energy also makes them easier to capture. There we go. Yeah, Don't worry about destroying things. That actually helps you in the long run. So Slimer got away. Well, now we're going to go for the big bad. And I thought Slimer was disgusting. And when you see something, you can actually capture its uh, profile. And you can see the type of ghost it is. Weakness, proton stream, days duration moderate, trap resistance medium. And it also shows where you may have captured them or where it originated from. So, there we go. You don't want to overheat your pack. All right, you've got a good window. Next stage, cap. You can project the capture stream or wrangler manually using this control. On the other hand, the pack will detect when a ghost is sufficiently weakened and auto select the capture stream setting. Get in there and throw a capture stream on that tub of boom. Fantastic, you got it! As soon as your ghost is in your capture stream, the slam meter begins to slowly charge. If you want to accelerate the slam meter charge, you can handle or counter wrangle the ghost at the end of the line. Here's how you do that. Watch the ghost. When he makes a dash in one direction, you pull the speed quickly in the other. Give it a shot! Work! Looks like it still has some fight left in it. Make sure your pack slam meter is charged. Let him have it. That's brutal. We did run a background check on you, right? Now we can move to stage three. Trap it. You're going to need some place to put that. Remember to retrieve your traps. Did you get them? Uh, we're batting 500. Slimer slipped out. So there we are. One in the box. Ready to go. We be fast and they be slow. So there you go. The graphics are actually pretty good on here. I'm not going to th throw anything that's copyright on here. I don't need any strikes against this channel. <laughs> but uh, so what do you guys think so far? Swing and a miss? Or is it a home run out of the park on this monitor? I mean, it's pretty good. Of course, without my lights on, it'll look even better, of course. And I still have the EOC right here. I have a little, I have my old camera up there for right now, and I have the new camera up there. So, there we go. So, there we are with the Samsung. And like I said, I'm going to put a link to Best Buy where I purchased it. And I'm going to include the model number, the make on the box, all, the, all that good stuff, guys. So tell me, what did you guys think? Yay or nay? Did you like it or do you want to chuck it? What are your thoughts? Now, as always, if you like this video, please give me a like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribing. And please comment, whether it's positive or negative. And if you have any suggestions or comments or inquiries, please 
feel free to email me at davesdimension78 at gmail.com, which is also in the description below. So until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension Scene. Keep on busting, and I'll catch you on the flip side.